welcome everybody to another edition of the Pride of the Polkadot podcast. I am your host, Zach Sterniolo, joined once again by Pocono Record Sports Editor Mike Coons and Pocono Record Sports Writer Sean Suchi. Guys, welcome back. Another Thanks. edition. Thanks for having us. Sean, uh, you know, you didn't jump out too far this this week. We all went 7-3 and three this week. Yeah, it was a good week for everybody. Uh, seven, seven correct picks, so... It was a good week for everyone. I, uh, I I dropped the ball picking ESU. I, I actually I think we all picked ESU to beat Mercyhurst last week. We did, yes. Um, they could not hold on to a lead, and uh, they ended up falling twenty five twenty to Mercyhurst. Also, you picked East Stroudsburg North, Sean, yes. to I- take down Pocono Mountain East. That did not happen. It did not. Pretty proud of the Cardinals though for uh, taking that game. After East Stroudsburg South kind of blew them out, I didn't think they would, you know, come out and win two in a row. But you got to give it to Pocono Mountain. The kids seem to be uh, buying into the program there, so that's good to see. For sure, that that made a huge difference. And then Mike, you ended up taking uh, Louisville over Clemson, and that did not work out for you. Uh, Clemson's the better team, I guess. You know, I had uh, high hopes on the Louisville quarterback and what he could do, and obviously as talented as he is you're only as good as your teammates around you and uh louisville uh isn't isn't better than clemson that's the uh, bottom line i took a stab i took a shot you did you got you, uh, you know this guy next to me he's uh, seven and three is a bad week for him i know you know i, know. I mean he says oh we all did so well at seven and three come on <laughs> well, he does seven and three in his sleep i know <laughs> listen seven for seven and three this year for me, is I feel like it's like a perfect week for me. I, I want to take him to Vegas with us. You know, it's like, come on, just right. give him the dice. <laughs> Honestly. All right, so let's look ahead here to week five. We got a full slate of games here once again. We'll start with uh, this one's probably the most interesting matchup, I think, of, of the week locally. We've got Pocono Mountain West on the road at Pleasant Valley. Mike, we'll, we'll start with you here. Who have you got? You know, I, I tell you what, this is a dangerous game for 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 both teams, really, because if you look at Pocono Mountain West, they haven't won a game. They really need to get one under their belt here. They have the they have the players to do it. They just haven't been able to put it together. Pleasant Valley got their first win against Allen last week, a game that they should have won. It did win handily, uh, won by a blowout. I'm going with the Bears. I think the Bears will figure out a way to win this game. I like their quarterback. I still think that they have holes on the offensive line, but at this point, whether I'm right or wrong, I don't trust the Panthers, so I'm going with the Bears. Sean, who have you got here? We've got Pocono West at Pleasant Valley. I'm going with PV as well. They got their first win last week, and West got blown out again Saturday against Emmaus. Got to go with the Bears here. They got Their offense got off to a pretty hot start against Allen, uh, they were putting up a lot of more offensive yardage, rushing, so I got to go with uh, the Bears. To put a cap on Pocono West's game last week, they lost 63-13 to to Emmaus. 244 passing yards for the team, but a loss of four yards was the net gain there um, on 29 carries on the ground for Pocono Mountain West's offense. Just a, a really rough game for them. They couldn't get anything going. Mace is a good team. Let's. I mean, there's no way around that. But West was just not, not in it. And Pleasant Valley, on the other hand, against William Allen, again, uh, a weaker team. But PV needed something like this to to finally get their season on the right track. Uh, Nasai, Nasai Moon ended up running for 241 yards in that one. Uh, on three touchdowns. Brandon Keys ran for uh, 51 yards on nine carries. I, I, that was the kind of game that can really put a pep in the step for Pleasant Valley's offense. So I, I'm taking the Bears here as well over Pocono Mountain West. So let's move on to our second game of the week here. We've got Pocono Mountain East at Allen. Pocono Mountain East is coming off of a 33-14 to win over East Stroudsburg North. Allen coming off that 31-6 loss to Pleasant Valley. Sean, who have you got in this one? i got to go with the Cardinals to take their third straight game in this one. Allen gave up over 300 rushing yards to PV last week and they kind of have struggled on the ground so uh, it should be another big week for praise andrews i think if they can hold on to the ball and they don't turn it over it should be pocono's game mike who have you got in this one cardinals at the canaries who would have thought that in week five after this week that the cardinals would be over 500 
think about that. This is a team that didn't score a touchdown the second half of last season, and now they're looking at being favored to win their third game of the season. I'm taking Pocono Mountain East. I think they're going to walk on the field feeling like they can win. They've won the last two games against better opponents. Why don't they feel, you know, why wouldn't they feel like they can't win this game? So it's a credit to Rob Miloski and the job that he's done and his staff up there. It's Pocono Mountain's game tonight, uh, Friday night. I agree with that 100%. I'm going Pocono Mountain East here as well. Uh, two phenomenal performances from Praise Andrews these last two weeks. Two weeks ago against Deerif, he had 254 yards and I think four touchdowns, three or four touchdowns there. Last week against East Stroudsburg North, 212 yards on, uh, I believe, 27 carries, three more touchdowns. Dylan Rinker looks every bit the, the part of a starting quarterback. He went three for seven last week, but he made each of those three completions count, 127 yards and, and a touchdown on the second play of the game, that one. I, I love everything I'm seeing out of that team right now. It seems like everyone's really bought in. It seems like everything's clicking the way it needs to be. And again, going back to your point there, I, going into this season, I don't know if any of us really thought that they would have had two wins on the season. And now they're two and two and, and really, in my opinion, should come away with a win Friday night here against Allen. Let's move on to our next game. We've got East Stroudsburg South at Nazareth. East Stroudsburg South won on Friday night by a score of 33-21, to 21, I believe, over Allentown Central Catholic. That was a huge win for the Cavaliers. Mike, who have you got? Good comeback for the for the Cavaliers. Good defensive play, uh, return for a touchdown, which uh, really, you know, a great win for, for Coach Walters and what he's been able to do and the, the, the guys over there at South. However, I'm going to pump the brakes here a little bit. Nazareth, I think, is a, is a step better than, than East Stroudsburg South still. So I'm going to go with the Blue Eagles only because I think on their field they're going to have a little bit of a confidence. They got some guy who plays receiver. Um, Jahan Dotson, I believe. Jahan Dotson. That's who it is. <laughs> He's like, I mean, this guy's going to be playing big time college football. And uh, if you haven't seen him play, <laughs> well, He's fast. <laughs> he is lightning. Uh, yeah. He's already. He can, go ahead. And I was gonna say he can, he can play defense too. Uh, he's got a couple of picks already this year. So, yeah, it, it's um, just ask Brandon Keys how good he is. He'll, he'll tell you. Oh yeah, because he and, picked him off. Yeah. And this is a kid who Dotson is committed to going to UCLA next year. It's not like he's. <laughs> he he. I mean, he had his options. He could have gone to Alabama. He could have gone to Pittsburgh. Uh, I was reading in, in a story recently a few weeks ago. And um, when you've got that kind of talent, it's hard to stop. I don't care who you are, especially at this level. South is going to have their hands full on Friday night. South is, is looking like a, a strong team, um, a competitive team, and their win on Friday against ACC w- was a huge step in the right direction for them. I, I just don't see them getting through Nazareth this week. So I'm taking Nazareth on Friday night. Sean, who have you got in this one? Yeah, Dotson, 13 receptions for 150 and two touchdowns last week. So he's going to be a r- really tough to stop for South. Huge win for them last week. But I got to go with Nazareth uh, at home. Let's move on to our next game here. We've got East Stroudsburg North on the road at Stroudsburg North. Again, lost 33-14 to 14 to Pocono Mountain East on Friday night, and Stroudsburg earned a 42-26 to win over Deeriff. Sean, who have you got in this one? Uh, Stroudsburg struggled a little uh, last week in the first half, but they their defense really came out and uh, held Deeriff. Uh, they didn't allow a point in the second half. Uh, North still struggling offensively, so I got to go with the Mounties in this game. Mike, who've you got in this one? I know you saw Stroudsburg last week down there yeah, at Jay Burden Crump. I did, and I, I, I saw you know uh, a couple of things out of Stroudsburg, but the big thing that they that I saw was that they were able to make adjustments. You know, not a, every team uh, is able to do that, and Stroudsburg's defense did. Uh, John Bazina and, and the guys over there, uh, you know, the coordinators, nice job, really nice job in the second half to shut down, you know, Vega from Deer from the second half. I don't think they have any problem with North here. I, I think Strasburg wins this game easily. I, I I was disappointed with what I saw from North on Friday night against Pocono Mountain East. I thought that they were going to come out a little bit more competitive now. In fairness, the weather conditions at North, especially that first half, were absolutely horrible. The uh, the skies just opened up, and poor Keith over here got 
just drenched, soaked. I think he's still wringing himself out uh, from that one. But Pokemon Mountain played in the same conditions, and they quite, quite literally ran away with it. Uh, Stroudsburg has been looking solid, at, really, in all facets these last three weeks. I haven't seen any any bad spots for them. They're, they're getting great receiver play with Chad Dorst and Nazir Lango. Justin Baldwin's been a very solid running back for them these last two or three weeks. I've got to go Stroudsburg here. Let's move on to college football. We've got Shippensburg coming into town. They're going to take on ESU. Mike, we'll start with you here. Who have you got? Yeah, um, this is going to be a tough game for ESU. I'm not going to say that it's not going to be winnable for them, but this is not going to be an easy one. Shippensburg's 3-0, and the stat that stands out for me is that they've only fumbled the ball away one time this year. So they're not turning the ball over a whole lot. I will say this, I think he can run a little bit against Shippensburg, and if East Stroudsburg University can run the football with the offensive line that they have, and they've established a running game this year, if they can continue to do that, I think it's a close game. If they can't do that, then I think Shippensburg's going to run away with this. Uh, Shippensburg's had their number the last couple of years. They beat them last year. Uh, Shippensburg won the game 31-14. The year before, they won that five-overtime game, like 69-67. So, uh, I begrudgingly, I'm taking the Red Raiders. Sean, who have you got in this one? I know uh, ESU fell, what was it, 25-20 to Mercyhurst on Saturday here. So, uh, who have you got in this one, Sean? Yeah, that was a bad loss for ESU. Uh, they had a decent lead at halftime, but uh, offense seemed to struggle in the second half, and uh, they let their defense out to dry a little bit there at the end. I think their running back was a little nicked up in the second half, so that could have been an issue. So I got to go with Shippensburg. I'm going Shippensburg here as well. I think ESU, is especially coming off that bad loss, they're, they're going to come out hungry, but I just don't think... I feel like that was a kind of one of those deflating losses uh, that could take the wind out of their sails a little bit. Whatever momentum that they were finding there in that first half, I think, really fell apart that second half. So I am taking Shippensburg here as well. Let's move on to Division One football. We've got Penn State on the road at Iowa this week. Sean, who have you got in this one? I have Penn State. It should be a little closer than the past couple of weeks for them. Iowa has an okay defense. But I got to go with uh, McSorley and Barkley. McSorley's playing really good on Barkley. <laughs> is, uh... Bar- Barkley is Barkley. I mean, <laughs> it is it is so hard to to stop a player like him week in week out. Like you said, McSorley's been playing better and better every week, and he's turning into a lot more of a quality quarterback than I than I, I thought at this point last season. I'm taking Penn State here as well. Who have you got, Mike? Yeah, I'm taking Penn State, but I think it's going to be closer than people think. You know, there's something about playing on the road in the Big Ten that uh, that should make you nervous. I'll say this. Iowa, the, yeah, they've the, the 3-0, but they've beaten Wyoming, Iowa State, and North Texas. So pump the brakes with that a little bit. You know, it's not like Penn State has really walloped anyone any very good either. You know, people talk about the two shutouts, but – uh, are, are we really surprised that they that they shut out those kinds of teams? So Penn State has a tough road schedule in the Big Ten. They play uh, Iowa this week. They got Northwestern down the road. They've got Ohio State at Ohio State, which is uh, always a good test. So they're going to get some this – is, this is a nice kind of lead-in game, I guess, I would say, for their Big Ten schedule. But I, I think that they should probably win this game by two touchdowns. And to your point, um, the three games that they've played, two, yeah, two of them have been shutouts, and the other one was against a Pittsburgh team that lost a ton of talent and, and really is, is not the Pittsburgh that it was last season. So I don't know what really you can take from that, from those first three games, as far as on a big picture scale so far. Let's move on to our next game. We've got TCU on the road at Oklahoma State. Uh, Oklahoma State thrashed Pittsburgh over the weekend here. Mike, we'll start with you. Who have you yeah, got? In this yeah, the, the, let's just say the state of Oklahoma is pretty good this year. <laughs> Oklahoma and Oklahoma State are both very good. Um, I, I'm just going to take Oklahoma State in this one. I don't really know much about uh, either team, but my, my gut's telling me that Oklahoma State's going to be probably – in the conversation, at least toward the end of the year of uh, being in the playoff. It's a possibility, at least. Sure, I, I would agree with that at this point as well. I'm taking Oklahoma State here as well. Same thing. I, I don't really know all that much about either side here. But, I mean, the way that 
uh, I've seen Oklahoma State at least results wise uh, so far. It's been it's been impressive. So I'm sticking with the Oklahoma State here. Who have you got, Sean? Yeah, you got to go with Oklahoma State here. They basically ran Pitt off their own field and. The stadium was empty in the third quarter, so that was a tough loss for Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, I, I would know. My uh, stepsister went to that game. She, was, I don't, I don't know how long she stuck around. <laughs> yeah, they they were offering uh, free free drinks to students that stayed until the end of the game. So um, <laughs> that tells you everything you need to know yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, but TCU is looking good too. They're coming off a blowout loss themselves, but um, I got to go with Oklahoma State at home. Let's move on to the NFL. We've got uh, three games that we're going to be taking a look at this week. We'll start with Pittsburgh at Chicago. We've got the Steelers at the Bears. Sean, who have you got? Uh, you got to go with the Steelers here. The Bears struggled in week two, but they looked okay in week one against the Cardinals. They almost won that game. Uh, the Steelers, a little slow start, but still 2-0. Uh, Soldier Field, sometimes it's tough to play on. Tough field to play on. The grass field could be issues for Bell. But uh, I got to go with the Steelers here. Mike, who have you got in this one? Yeah, I'm I'm with uh, Sean. You know, the the master over there. He's dead right. You know, as usual, it's the grass field. It's it's you know Bell's speed, uh, which he hasn't really had a big game yet. You know, and people will say you know uh, he missed some of the training camp and all this kind of stuff with his contract and yada yada yada. Um, uh, Pittsburgh until they lose I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna think that again talking about teams that you expect to be standing at the end of the year I think right now Pittsburgh the Broncos New England I don't know I don't know if I trust New England's uh, wide receivers or anything but yeah it's Pittsburgh I'm going Pittsburgh here as well um I haven't seen anything from the Bears yet that's really sold me on them especially against a a, a 2-0 Steelers team um the Steelers haven't necessarily been lights out, but they've been consistent enough to win football games so far. So I'm sticking with Pittsburgh here as well. Let's move to the NFC East. We've got the Giants on the road playing in Philadelphia at the Eagles. Sean, who have you got in this one? I think this goes two, two ways, either two ways. The Giants hit rock bottom here and get killed, <laughs> or they, they turn it around and win. There's but, a reason um, you made direct <laughs> eye contact with me on that one. All right, go ahead. <laughs> But uh, you, you got to go with the Eagles here because their defensive line has looked dominant in the first two weeks. Um, the Giants' offensive line just cannot block. So uh, against the Cowboys and Lions, their lines aren't the greatest, and the Eagles have been pretty good. They look pretty good against the Chiefs too. But they kind of uh, the Chiefs pulled away there at the end. But um, I'm going with the Eagles. Mike, who have you got on this one? Yeah, Sean's reading my notes. You know, uh, <laughs> that's all right, though. He's allowed. Listen, until the Giants can figure out, well, their offensive line is, is kind of vague, but specifically it's left tackle, Flowers. He's, oh, he's a mess. I don't know what's going on over there. Apparently uh, the Giants are the only team in the NFL that think this guy can play left tackle, and guess what? He can't. He can't block anyone. I don't think he can block me. You know, <laughs> so uh, unless they do it, I've heard that they're possibly, you know, thinking about maybe switching uh, Pew, the right tackle, and having him play left tackle. they got to come up with something because the Eagles' the defensive line is just going to chew him up and spit him out. And the link, they're just going to smell blood. You know, that's uh, – I mean, it's a division game. They're going to have them at home. The Eagles would love to beat this team by 30 points, you know? So, yeah, it's Philly's game. Uh, God, it hurts, but I, I can't disagree with any of what you guys are saying. Eric Flowers, first of all, I'm a, I'm a fairly casual NFL fan, so I, I don't know a lot of the lineman names. I shouldn't know the lineman names. <laughs> I know Eric Flowers' name really, <laughs> really well at this point. Dude can't block to save his life, uh, or Eli's for that matter. Uh, it's it, and it's he atrocious. Can't run. No. Eli can't run. He no. can't scramble. No, God. he's like a grandpa back there. Going no. <laughs> Flowers is throwing lookout blocks. I mean, the defensive ends are running around him. He's yelling, "Look out!" <laughs> it's true though, and you know they they bring Brandon Marshall on, and he's he's just been a ghost so far and I don't that's not his fault that the Giants offense to start this season has just been non-existent and uh, it's killing them it's killing them so far and yeah, Marshall had an ugly drop uh, last night too yeah and, and you can't have stuff like that 
Carson Wentz, I know he, he got fairly overworked in my last game against the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he threw the ball, what, 46 times? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's a ton of throws. Um, but I, the way that Philadelphia is looking right now, I think they've looked great these first two games. Mm-hmm. Jim Schwartz's defense has been phenomenal. It's going to be – I don't think the Giants have anything for them, honestly, at this point. Uh, so, God, we're moving on to say our it, next game. Say it. Say it. Who have you got? No, no, I'm not getting there yet, but we got Dallas Cowboys on the road at the Arizona Cardinals. Mike, who have you got here? We'll start with you. All right, this is my little bit of an upset here. I'm going with the Cardinals. Uh, why? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, like, I, I like the idea, you know, that, that maybe Arizona has found a, a, a replacement running back in Chris Johnson. Yeah, he's that guy. Remember, he was with the Tennessee and it was with the Jets for some time, and he had those big seasons. And then he's kind of disappeared for a while. Well, well, guess what? He's in Arizona. He hasn't played really much the last two years, but in the second half of a fairly sexy road win at Indianapolis to, to beat the Colts, came in and ran for 44 yards in the second half mostly. And uh, so I like a little bit. This is going to be a little upset pick. Don't go crazy with me here because Sean's giving me the hairy eyeball right now, but I'm going with the Cardinals to beat the Cowboys. Take it away, Sean. Sean, who have you got? Yeah, the Cardinals are pretty lucky to be one and one uh, the, the Colts are pretty bad, but uh, they pulled that one out last week. The Cowboys, pretty b- embarrassing loss Sunday against the Broncos. Elliott's getting some flack for uh, not hustling on an interception. So I got to go with the Cowboys here. Bounce back game for them. I swear to God, you just picked this game so I could I would be forced to choose Dallas, but I'm picking the Cowboys. Uh, picking the Cowboys. I I get like to your like you were just saying there, Elliot. He, he did not look good. I mean, that was just a bad performance from him on Sunday against the Broncos. But I still have a lot of faith in Dak Prescott. Um, I think he he's still the best leader they have on that team right now he's super mature i i've liked everything i've seen from him since he became the starter of the of that team i don't see anything from arizona that really thrills me and, and really tells me that they're gonna have anything to fight against dallas with so i am taking dallas this week god i'm taking <laughs> dallas and i'm not taking the giants this this is the worst decision I've ever had. Never wrap. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. That is all we've got for today's episode. Let's recap our picks really quick. Uh, we've got Pocono Mountain West at Pleasant Valley. I think we are all taking the Bears there. We've got Pocono Mountain East on the road at William Allen, all taking the Cardinals. We were all taking Nazareth over East Stroudsburg South, Stroudsburg over East Stroudsburg North as well. I think we've all got Shippensburg over East Stroudsburg University. Then we've got Penn State at Iowa, all taking Penn State. We've all got Oklahoma State over TCU, Steelers over the Bears, and I, th- I think we're in agreement on all these, aren't we? Yes, except. Oh, uh, that's right. That's right. You're one upset pick here. So we've got the uh, we've all got the Steelers over the Bears, Eagles over the Giants, and Mike, you've got the Cardinals over the Cowboys, and Sean and I have the Cowboys when coming away with that one. Be sure to tune in next week for a new edition of our Poker Record football picks as we recap the picks you just heard here and look ahead to the second half of the high school football season. To find all of our links, you can find us on Twitter at at Pocono Podcast. This podcast can be found on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment wherever and however you're listening because we want to hear from you, the listeners, and see what you guys have to say. And if you subscribe, you'll never miss any of our newest episodes. This podcast has been brought to you by PoconoRecord.com slash contests. Last year, we gave away over $20,000 in prizes, so be sure to visit often to see what we're giving away next. Again, that is PoconoRecord.com slash contests. That's all we've got for today. Thanks again for listening, and until next time, take care.